him, and, we're, and then I'll give him a proper introduction in just a moment, but I think the roll-in will be a better introduction than even I can give him. But let's give uh, Dr. Paul uh, Denikaran a big hand right now. Would you do that? Give him a big hand. Now watch the roll-in that we have for you right now. Will you do that? Just calls that your sorrow will be turned into joy. The Lord chose Dr. Paul Dinnikaran, co-founder of the Jesus Calls Ministries when he was in the days of his youth. This ministry brings hope and comfort to millions of people as Dr. Paul presents the love of Christ through his message and prayers. His public meetings attract 200,000 to 500,000 in a single service, resulting in thousands finding the Lord Jesus as the Savior of their lives. Dr. Paul has established 44 Jesus Calls prayer towers all over the world, through which people find divine comfort and peace. Nearly 50,000 people reach the prayer towers daily. He has recently established a 24-7 prayer tower in Dallas, Texas. The Jesus Calls National Prayer Tower in New Delhi is located just in front of the Parliament of India. The worldwide television ministry of Jesus Calls produces nearly 1,800 TV programs every month in seven languages. Dr. Paul is Chancellor of Coruña University. The university occupies 700 acres of land and offers courses in engineering, management, health, and media, along with teaching spiritual values from the bachelor's level to the PhD level. Dr. Paul also runs an organization called Sisha, which is the social service wing of Jesus Calls Ministry. Sisha offers help to thousands, including poor children, orphans, widows, the destitute, sick and suffering through its various welfare measures, hospitals, and care homes. God has given Dr. Paul the mandate to prepare the world for Jesus' second coming. Obeying God's word, Dr. Paul is about to establish a prophetic prayer tower at Jerusalem, Israel, to pray for the nations of the world. This is Jesus Calls International. Dr. Paul Dinikaran is also the chief architect of the Jesus Calls Ministry, which heals the brokenhearted around the world through the love and the compassion of Christ. He established Jesus Called prayer tires all over India, several countries uh, where dedicated prayer intercessors offer prayer 24 hours a day, has a worldwide television ministry called Jesus Calls. Let's all give him a great big welcome again, Dr. Paul Dinikaran, to praise the Lord. <laughs> Pleasure to have you. Well, I'll tell you, uh, uh, that's, a, that's a powerful ministry that the Lord has given you. The grace of You, you know, I'm, I've got a lot of questions here to ask you, but I would just like to... Uh, Start off, if, if I can, first of all, this isn't on there. How did you come to know, first of all, the Lord Jesus Christ? How did that happen in your life? Well, uh, my grandfather received Christ first in our family. He was uh, attending a school started by the missionaries from England. And uh, as he was also learning about Jesus Christ, he found that he was holy. Holy, mm-hmm. holy. He said, this person's life is holy. He must be God. And he gave his life to Christ. But then after he got married, he said, I want to marry a Christian girl. And he got married, but the greatest agony followed him. My grandmother suffered with fits and convulsions. And it was at that time He was longing for the reality of Christ. And Mm -hmm. my father became a young man at that time, and he saw the suffering of my grandmother, the poverty in the family, and said, there is no God. If there is a God, then why should this happen? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But then he said, finally, let me die. And he was going to commit suicide. But on the way, his uncle met him. And his uncle was a police officer, and he said... Dinakaran, that's the name of my father. Mm -hmm. Why do you have to live a miserable life? Why don't you ask God to give you peace? Mm -hmm. My father said, will God give me a job? He said, yes. 
Will God heal my mother? He said, yes. Will God give me hope in life? He said, yes. What should I do? He said, go and ask him. Ask him to show you your heart. Mm -hmm. And when he shows you your heart, remember the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses you from all sins. Praise God. So he went back and said, Mm -hmm. he was living in a one-room house, and he said, Jesus, if you are God, come and give me peace. And amazingly, like a movie, his whole life came before him. And he saw all the evil that he had done. And finally, he cried and cried and said, is there a way out? And he remembered his uncle's Mm -hmm. voice. And he said, Lord, wash me with your blood that you shed on the cross. And the peace came into his heart. And he became a new man. But then he read the scriptures and he found that man could talk to God. And God could talk to man. And the disciples of Jesus performed miracles. And it was at that time the greatest evangelist of our times, Pastor T.L. Osborne, came to India. Mm -hmm. And he had only one crusade. And he advertised, come and see the miracles of the living Christ. (laughs) He's alive. He said, my father said, no one has ever shown the miracles of the living Christ, let me go. And he traveled with his neighbor who was dying with asthma. And he was there in the meeting and suddenly his neighbor was missing. And my father thought something has happened. And behold, he saw him on the platform jumping up and down. A man who was almost dead. And he said, Jesus is alive. My father said, this is the Jesus I want. And he was sitting there on the last day, you know, 110 degrees heat, two o'clock in the afternoon, right on the ground. And Brother T.L. Osborne said, Hmm. if we show the real resurrection, Christ, resurrected Christ, India is ready to receive him. And people are ready to receive him. I have to come all the way from the United States to show this power of God. What are you people doing here? Because 80,000 people raised their hands and said, we want this living Christ. My father's heart broke. And he said, I want to do it, Lord. And that day he heard a voice. Exactly as Brother T.L. Osborne heard. You are that man. And Christ appeared to him in a month's time. And he spoke to him face to face for three hours. And he said, my son, this world has heard about my love. But it has never seen my love in the life of a man. When I was in this world, when I saw the multitudes, I was moved with compassion. And I spoke to them words of comfort. I forgave their sins and turned them into righteous people. I healed the sick with compassion. I fed the people with compassion. I want to show that compassion through a man. I've chosen you for that. And India needs my love, my compassion. And... From that day, the love and compassion started flowing. And that's how Jesus Calls Ministries began. And today, it's still flowing because the love of Jesus Christ is still alive. He loves his people. (laughs) Truly, God loves his people. Tell us about then how your your mission in life and how that came about in the call. I was a young man, grew up under tremendous discipline in my home and my mother said my son should be holy and he should have double portion of his dad but when I went to college I said I don't need Jesus I don't want Jesus because the pleasures of the world are wonderful but my mother said there's no point in you know breaking his head in India you have the license to do that you can knock your son's head but not now but I always used to say my mother gave me so many knocks on my head that my head has gone permanently out of shape (laughs) and all the more now I'm losing my hair and uh, it'll be exposed but then she said no point in doing this let me fast and pray for my son once a week every Tuesday she fasted for me just for me And she would cry from morning till night after cooking for the whole family. And I said, your prayers will never change me. I am enjoying life. But then within a few weeks, God touched my life, changed me, and I became a new man. And it was through my father's own ministry. One night he was preaching, and I was sitting there 
a small crowd and my mother and my parents had me there. But then suddenly my father said, you're trying to become a somebody by yourself, but God wants to make you a somebody. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And as Elijah brought fire from heaven and the whole nation fell before him and said, this man's God is God. God can make you that somebody. Trust him and come to him. And I said, I'm trying to become a somebody by myself, but I'm becoming a nobody. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm caught up in all the pleasures mm -hmm. of the world. I'm a nobody. Nobody wants me. But then I cried. And that night, God changed my life. And I cried like a little baby, gave my life to Christ, unashamed. And peace came into my heart. But then I read the scriptures, and I found that Jesus needed the Holy Spirit for God to be with him and for him to go about doing good and delivering those who are oppressed of the devil. And I cried for God to fill me with the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit came and he spoke to me and said, My son, I'll be your only friend from now on. And I had to do my studies again. So I put a chair by my side and say, Lord, you're my friend. Come and teach me everything. And the Holy Spirit would fill me and joy would fill me. And I would speak in the heavenly language and study. And he would teach me everything. And I did my studies. I got a gold medal when I passed out, did my MBA later. I did my PhD in advertising and God was preparing me. And along with that, my father was doing huge crusades. And suddenly, exactly at that time when I gave my life to God and the Holy Spirit came, my father could not go to the crusade. He was working in a bank and the bank would not give him leave. Next time he would become sick. And the Holy Spirit said, send your son. Those days I was so short, lean, and inexperienced. I am what I am. <laughs> After I got married, <laughs> when my wife came into my heart, life. But then, first time, when I went there, the organizer said, we want Brother Dinakran, but you are here. What are you trying to do? I said, he could not come. Those days we didn't have the mobile phone. But then they announced, oh, we miss Brother Dinakran. We are sorry he is not here. We apologize. But anyway, today his son is here. And tomorrow he'll be here. But that was their heart. But God gave me the grace to humble myself and give my life totally to Christ and stand before the people. And on the first night, we had 5,000 people coming to Christ. Mm. And a man who was brought from the hospital with a heart disease jumped out of the stretcher and he began to walk. And I knew the grace of God was there. That's mm. how my ministry began. And then God led me to start uh, uh, television ministry. Mm -hmm. India did not have television uh, for private producers at that time. Mm -hmm. But the Holy Spirit uh, at that moment brought us to uh, the USA and my father was very sick at that time he had a kidney transplant in 1985 and we had association with Pastor John Osteen mm -hmm. and he loved us loved us because he loved India so much mm -hmm. and his son today Reverend Joel Osteen was behind the scene doing television and I would be with him all the time during those six months because we had to do our radio programs and send to India and he taught me television and I took back that uh, grace with me. <laughs> and I said, whether the government allows it or not, I'm going to buy the equipment, the television equipment in faith. Yeah, that's faith. And it's amazing. We had to pay 350% duty. And yet I said, wow. we will get it. Took a loan from the bank. My father supported me in this and got the equipment. You won't believe when we got the equipment, the government opened its door for private television in India. Praise God. Praise God. Today, by the grace of God, we do 1,800 programs a month in 10 languages from India. And we are also on church channel today. Thank God for TBN, yeah. who always does the same thing in faith, march out and do everything first class. This is royalty yeah. exhibited through television, the royalty of Christ. And I'm so glad uh, that we have an opportunity. Yeah. And then the Lord showed my father, my son, you have 
public crusades and the people come, give their lives to me, and they are blessed. But you must have a place where they can come and receive mm -hmm. my blessing. Mm -hmm. And prayers can be offered 24 hours. And he opened my father's eyes to have a prayer tower. And we started the first prayer tower in a place called Chennai in India. And uh, thousands of calls came in. And then the Lord showed me that we should have prayer towers in different parts of India because every state speaks a different language in India. And today we have 34 prayer towers in different parts of India and 10 prayer towers in different parts of the world, one in Dallas, Texas too. And 24 hours, 4,000 prayer intercessors pray, of course, in shifts. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. 50,000 people touch the prayer tower. Mm -hmm. And the key thing that we believe in is the Lord loves his people. Yes. Loves his loves people us. unconditionally. Moses walked with God mm -hmm. and finally he said, of all the things that I know about him is truly God loves his people. Yeah. And the Lord's verse, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And when I come to you, your sorrow will turn into joy. Hallelujah. I'm not going to condemn you, my son. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to condemn you, my daughter. I will take you in my arms. I'll embrace you as I did the little children. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I will bless you. And God's blessings turns every curse into a blessing. No curse can mm -hmm. stand before the love of Jesus Christ. Thank you for that. So we pray with that faith saying, God loves you, God loves you. And the blessings pour into them. Their sins vanish. Their sins vanish. Mm -hmm. Even now I feel, if you would let me. Yes, yes. There's a person called Sarah who has been rejected, who is watching this program. Yes, Lord. Sarah, you have taken all kinds of pills. You have had your mother reject you. That has been the greatest agony that you have right now. Nobody to count on. But right now, Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you. I see that God has prepared a person mm -hmm. called Martin. Martin to come into your life. You had musical talent, Sarah. God is going to revive mm -hmm. it again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He loves you. Mm -hmm. You're yes. going to become a mother to thousands of people, not only a mother. Don't die. Jesus is ready to help you. He's ready to help you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I see a name, Martin. Hmm. Martin, you have lumps all over your back. It is done by, it has come to you by witchcraft. Hmm. Jesus heals you right now. Thank you, Lord. Right now, those evil powers are leaving you. Thank you, Lord. You shall have a mighty healing ministry. You shall go to other countries also. The Lord has a purpose in your life. You have never condemned anybody. You have never discredited the name of Jesus Christ. You have borne your sorrows yourself. But right now, Jesus is resurrecting you. And he is giving you a brand new life. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. The grace of God is coming. Grace of God. To provide financial blessings. There are some of you who say, I have no hope. I can't even take a step further. There's no hope for my tomorrow. But right now, the Holy Spirit says, Jesus has already sacrificed himself for you. For you to live, for you to be prosperous, for you to have hope. Do not be afraid. The Lord is taking over your burdens and he's building your life, yes. building your home, building your future according to his riches, according to his plan. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for the grace that is coming upon your people. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, wonderful Lord. The Lord mm -hmm. enabled us not only to bring this grace to others through the ministry, 
but also establish a university in India for the very first time a Christian university offering secular courses to raise Daniels and Josephs to higher levels to bring the power of God to the nation. 7,500 students study there. It's a residential institution and people come from all over India now from different parts of the world and they go out as his ambassadors. Praise the Lord. And this is the grace that God has graciously given us. And the greatest thing is we have prayers, Mm -hmm. praying for the people and also praying for us to walk in humility and righteousness. You know, uh, Dr. Paul, before our time runs out, I want to say this. I feel like if we put this in perspective, am I correct in saying 600, 700 million in uh, India? 1.2 billion. 1.2 billion people. The second largest country in the world, I suppose, second only to China. Yes. Yes. And so when you put that in perspective, the United States of America, what are we, somewhere around 300 million plus, somewhere in that. Now think about that harvest field over there. I remember Dr. T.L. Osborne said one time, he said these words. He said, the Lord spoke to him and he said, if we could get the people in America just to exercise their faith like the people in India that many have never even heard the name of Jesus. But you simply preach the word, they believe, and they receive. But in America, these are Dr. Osborne's word, and I'm kind of paraphrasing it, but it's almost like we have to, over here, people have to work through their religion, their ideas, and so on. But he was talking about if that childlike faith when you speak something to your people, yes. they hear it and they receive it. I want you to pray before uh, our time is out here, doctor, if you will. And I want us to believe, God, that the people that are going to hear this prayer, that that same childlike faith, you're sick in your body, mm-hmm. all over America that are people that are watching that doctors have given them up, You've gone to doctors, and like the woman with the issue of blood, they're saying we can do nothing else for you. But let that faith, that simple, childlike faith, as doctor prays for us right now, that the miracle working power of God, will you get in agreement with me right now, you that are in the studio audience, that it'll just sweep throughout our nation, Mm -hmm. and many miracles will take place right now. Thank you, Jesus. Please, doctor, do that for us. Thank you. Father, remember your children, Lord. They are not watching this telecast by accident. It is because you love them that you have made them watch this program. Yes, Lord. And you're very close to them as they are opening their hearts to you and saying, Jesus... Answer their cry, Lord. Yes, Lord. Remove every addiction. Remove every sin, every guilt. Remove every sickness, Lord. Yes, Lord. Remove every curse. Yes, Remove Lord. every work of the devil. Uh-huh. We bind them in Jesus', Jesus name. Jesus' name. And we command them to be healed, healed. in your holy name, Lord yes, Jesus. Lord. Let every sickness yes, go. And let every sin go. Let every evil power go. Yes. Let there be relationships healed. Whatever they have lost, let it come back to them in double measure. Father, in double measure, give it to them and give let them rejoice them, having everything back in double measure from yes, this Lord. moment, yes, Lord. Lord. Embrace them, kiss them and bless them with your blessings, Lord. Thank you for doing it. Give them a new tomorrow from this very moment. Let their sorrows turn into joy. Thank you for doing it, Lord. Thank you. In Jesus' name. Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. (laughs) Doctor, one more more prayer, if you will. I I know in my heart, I I know of of a case where a a father's heart is broken over a tragedy in his home. I I know of others that uh, are simply at the end of their road. They don't know what to do. Tragedy has befallen them. 
I just feel impressed of the Holy Spirit that you just, right now, everyone that's watching, that you're going through something that you know it's going to take the divine Holy Spirit to intervene in this situation for healing, not only physically, but spiritually and emotionally, and your hearts are broken. I feel an anointing upon our precious doctor right now. Just feel that of the Holy Ghost, my brother, and just pray right now for those that have broken hearts. My sister, who was 17 years old, was killed in a cruel car accident. And she was traveling with my parents as they were going for a crusade to preach the gospel and also to beg for money in a bank to build the university. Yeah. We said, why, why, why? why? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And we could never get an answer. We were crying. But after two months, Jesus appeared. And he said, my children, I am also crying with you, but this is the way. But I've challenged the angels in heaven. I've challenged Satan that in the midst of this agony, you will still follow me. Yes. Will you let me down? Yes. Angel is with me. Mm-hmm. But you have a mission to perform. Will you let me down? Yeah. And we cried and said, Lord, if we let you down, we have to go to hell. Someday we have to come to heaven. We need you, Lord. Yes. Whatever it takes, we will trust you. Yes. This was in 1986. God built us up, comforted us, and we built the first Christian university in India. And today millions are getting comforted. Thank you, Lord. So those of you who are going through such agony, yes. you are not living for yourself. Mm-hmm. Your broken heart, your brokenness will heal yes. millions of people. Yes. You are God's instrument yes. carrying his cross to heal millions. Do not be afraid. He will strengthen you and give you back everything as he gave Job, double measure, as you begin to minister to others. Let us pray. Father, mm. yes, Lord. remember your children. Remember your children. Whatever it is, we are in the flesh, Lord. We are in the flesh. We can't bear this agony. Thy children are unable to bear this agony, Lord. But you are a healer of the broken heart. You are their father. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Take them in your arms. Embrace them. Let the peace that passeth all understanding, mysteriously, supernaturally, fill them right now in Jesus' name. Raise them up. And fulfill all that you have planned to yes. fulfill through them, Lord. Yes, receive. Compensate yes. for their tears. Compensate for their agony. And bring healing to millions through them. Do miracles. Do miracles. And heal their broken hearts. And strengthen them. Strengthen them. Turn their sorrows into joy. Thank you, Jesus, for doing that. Yes, Lord. You have said, I will never leave you, my child. I will never forsake you. Don't say you have sinned. That's why you're going through this agony. Do not condemn yourself. Jesus tells you, don't condemn yourself. Mm-mm. But just trust me. Trust me. Trust in my love. Trust me. I need you. I need you. I need your broken heart to heal the others. Thank you, Lord, for giving them grace to surrender. 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 And see miracles and joy through that. In Jesus' name. Everybody Amen. lift your hands and thank the Lord for the answered prayer praise tonight. Thank give you Jesus. praise, Father, and we give you glory thank for you your Jesus. healing, healing power in Jesus' name. Please tell Dr. Paul Dinekeren how much we appreciate him being here tonight. Thank you. Thank you for being with us, Doctor. And you're also building a prayer tower in Jerusalem. <laughs> building a prayer tower in Jerusalem. To pray for the nations of the world. <laughs> well, you've blessed us tonight. You've ministered thank to you. us. And for that, thank we're God most for grateful. Thank Let's God thank him for it. <laughs> most grateful. <laughs> Chopper Wood is, Ward is ready to sing for us right now a song entitled Once Again. Give Chopper.